Welcome to the Utility Energy Registry <laughs> webinar. My name is Lola Schoenrick, and I'm a Vice President with the Great Plains Institute. We work on transforming the energy system to benefit the economy and the environment. And as I said, this is the webinar on introducing the Utility Energy Registry project. You are on mute, but we welcome your engagement and your questions. You can send in your comments and questions by entering them in the question and answer box at the top left-hand corner of your screen, so you can be looking for that. We'll be answering questions at the end of the webinar, but we invite you to send them along uh, all along the way. We're recording the webinar so that others can access it later, and it will be posted on our webpage next week. We're not going to use the raise your hand function today, so the Q&A box is the way to ask a question. So to dive right in, the purpose the purpose of the webinar today is to introduce the Minnesota Utility Energy Registry and to launch a year-long initiative to develop this online platform to, that will provide streamlined public access to community-scale utility energy demographic data, a utility energy registry. We've got a five-part agenda today. We'll start with a bit of background on the purpose of the project and what's already being done here in Minnesota to provide local governments with community-wide energy data. And then we'll talk about what's being done in New York State where the first utility energy registry was developed. <clears throat> Luckily, we have work underway here in Minnesota that we can build on in developing the utility energy registry. So in that third part of the agenda, we'll talk about that and explain what that is. Fourth, we'll talk about next steps, and then we'll go to Q&A. We've got several speakers. Besides myself, we have Mauricio Leon with LHB, who will help us understand what's been done already in Minnesota. Then Heather Corcoran, who's with the League of Minnesota Cities, will share their perspective on the needs of cities. Jim Yanger with Climate Action Associates and the State of New York will talk about the work been, that has been done in New York State. And Jessica Burdett with the Minnesota Department of Commerce will share the context of other policy work and programmatic work being done in Minnesota. But first, before we dive in, we'd like to know a little bit more about you and who is on the call. You should be seeing a poll coming up. And if you would take a moment and check off who you are, you should be seeing that on the screen. Looks like a really good mix of local government people, utility people, government agencies, universities, and not-for-profit, which is great. That's exactly what we had been hoping for. We're going to advance the slides here. Here we go. So we're going to start with talking about a little bit of background. What is a utility energy registry anyway, and why is it important? What a utility energy registry is conceived of as a voluntary energy community level energy data platform 
a platform into which utilities can voluntarily upload community level energy data. It will have energy metrics describing energy use and generation characteristics, and you might ask what data we would be talking about. Energy use by sector, certainly, but also perhaps generation from distrib distributed resources within the locality, perhaps additional information on utility energy efficiency, green purchase programs, or other utility programs. Part of the purpose of the project over the next year is to decide what kind of data communities want and need and what is possible to provide. The utility energy registry will have consistent geospatial parameters, so city boundaries, surely, but perhaps uh, more defined zip codes or census tracts. We're talking about annual data or monthly, but consistent definitions of the time frames. So why do we need a utility energy registry? The project here came about because of increasing local government interest in energy, climate plans, developing policies and programming. Local governments here are and have for some time been interested in their own operations, but they are increasingly getting interested in setting community-wide goals and in developing energy, climate, or resilience plans. And to do that, they need accurate, consistent energy data. This is not necessarily easy for them to, do, to get. And it's particularly difficult for communities that are served by more than one utility. So the purpose of the Utility Energy Registry is both to provide local governments with consistent and up-to-date energy data that they need and want to inform the planning, implementation, and assessment of their goals and programs, and for utilities at the same time to streamline the process of what surely is a stream of multiple different community level energy data requests, sometimes asking for different things. The Utility Energy Registry was first developed in the state of New York in response to similar kind of community interest there in energy data. This particular project is a four state initiative and with support of the DOE State Energy Program grant, Minnesota's joined with New York State, Maryland, and the District of Columbia to develop the next iteration of the Utility Energy Registry in each state. We will have a Minnesota State Working Group that will be made up of utilities, community leaders, and other interested people to lead the state effort. In Minnesota here, the project is led by us at Great Plains Institute with support from LHB and the Minnesota Department of Commerce. I'd like to give you a bit more background on why we were excited to bring this project to Minnesota. And I want to start with Green Step Cities, which we co-direct with the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. Green Step Cities is a public-private pa partnership. It's a voluntary challenge assistance and recognition program that is designed to help cities to achieve their own sustainability and quality of life goals. There are 117 cities and three tribal nations now engaged. It's a best practice based program it's designed for smaller, medium sized cities. And you can see on the slide that those cities are all over the state. The energy-related best practice actions are among the most popular that cities take on. And then furthermore, Green Step Cities is a continuous improvement program with five steps. Steps four and five invite cities to track environmental metrics, including energy usage. And many of the Green Step Cities are engaged in some kind of energy and climate planning. These and other Green Step cities and other Minnesota cities that are increasingly interested in energy, climate, for various reasons, 
More than 20 of the Green Step cities are deeply involved in setting energy goals in their comprehensive plan. They're using tools developed by Great Plains Institute and LHB through a project called LogoPEP that Mauricio is going to talk more about in a moment. Excel Energy and Center for Energy and the Environment are working with cities through a program called Partners in Energy. And we consistently hear from those partners in energy pro cities that they are ready to do more when they are done with partners in energy. There are five Minnesota cities that are involved in uh, exchange with peer German cities called Climate Smart Cities. And uh, all of them are looking for and using community level energy data. There is some community level energy data available already for communities here. One of those projects is called the Regional Indicators Initiative. It's run by LHB and it provides communities with Green Step cities with energy, water, waste, and transportation data. But our current methodology for getting that energy data is for someone from LHB to email or call utilities one by one and ask them to provide the data. That takes time and isn't really sustainable over the long term for either the local governments or for the utilities. Fortunately, we've also done some other work here in Minnesota. There was some pre-development work done on the utility energy registry by a group that was funded by and led through the University of Minnesota that engaged a number of stakeholders to sketch out the parameters of a uniform utility energy registry. So we have a considerable body of work to draw upon as we look now into developing the utility energy registry. I'm going to turn this over now to Mauricio Leon. Thanks, Lola. My name is Mauricio Leon, and as part of my role as Energy and Climate Specialist at LHB, I coordinate data requests for the Regional Indicators Initiative, which is one example of many programs that could benefit enormously from a statewide utility energy registry. Regional Indicators is an initiative to measure key sustainability metrics for local governments in Minnesota. For example, how many megawatt hours does a city use every year inside its boundary? And how much carbon dioxide is emitted by this energy use? We try to provide an answer to those questions. The data is presented with nice visuals in a website that anyone from local planners to citizens can access for free. So far, more than 25 cities have published data in the Regional Indicators public website. And we're currently expanding the program to include more cities in Greater Minnesota and the metropolitan region. Currently, there is data available from the year 2007. And the more years of data we add, the more interesting trends we see and we gain insight about sustainability in the state. The goal of Regional Indicators is to provide metrics. With metrics, cities can assess their progress throughout the years and compare themselves to other cities. Some of the metrics we quantify are, for example, energy use, vehicle miles travel, and waste generated by cities. But it's not only about showing data. We utilize this data to create planning tools for local governments. At the Regional Indicators website, Cities can also find a series of resources to make their energy planning process simpler. The Local Government Project for Energy Planning, also known as Logo PEP, is a project that brought together energy policy experts to create tools for mun municipalities. For example, a guide that provides local governments with language and advice to incorporate energy planning in their comprehensive planning process. Or, Another good example is the Wedge Diagram Tool, a web-based application that allows cities to forecast their emissions and pick strategies that could decrease these emissions in the coming decades. There is, however, one important need that has to be addressed. 
As Lola mentioned, collecting energy data is by far one of the most labor-intensive tasks on a project like this one. It requires contacting multiple utility companies which might have different methods and policies for sharing data. Minnesota has many utility companies that serve its territory, a little over 180 energy utilities. Therefore, as we try to expand the number of cities in the regional indicators database, the more we find that there should be a solution for centralizing and standardizing data collection. We have been collecting energy data since 2010. Initially, many energy utilities did not fully understand what we were asking for. Nonetheless, we have successfully collected data for cities and our goal is to keep expanding. We are currently working on adding energy and travel data for more than 80 cities. in Minnesota. The Utility Energy Registry will simplify the process of collecting energy data for initiatives like this one. Utility companies and local governments will be able to enter data directly to the repository. With this, data can be used for multiple processes. Because of efforts like the Regional Indicators Initiative, Utilities are starting to understand why energy data is important for local governments. We are in the era of data-driven decision-making. There is a lot that local governments can do to help meet the state energy goals. But this requires having a better understanding of where their baseline is and what are realistic goals and expectations. Excel Energy already has a community scale energy data reporting program, where not only they publish energy use of a community, but they also provide metrics about participation in their end user programs. Excel Energy offers a variety of programs to their customers, for example, green power purchases, programs that allow customers to get more of their energy from renewable sources, conservation improvement programs, and subscriptions to community solar gardens. Providing this information allows local communities to track their participation on these programs. Utilities like Excel could benefit from a utility energy registry for, for multiple reasons. For example, this could make data reporting consistent across utilities, limiting the time spent on determining how to best report data. It could also enhance the way data is presented to the public by providing data visualizations and geospatial information. Excel Energy and CE, Center for Energy and Environment, has a program named Partners in Energy, which provide communities with free services to develop an energy plan and assistance with implementing that plan. With the implementation of an utility energy registry, utilities could collaborate and enhance this type of initiative. The Utility Energy Registry will in some way scale up the concept behind Excel Community Energy Reports. Now I'm going to hand it back to Lola. Thank you, Mauricio. Clearly there's been a lot of work done gathering data for regional indicators and in a lot of experience in Minnesota with community level energy data. I'm going to turn this over now to Heather Corcoran. She's the Member Relations Coordinator at the League of Minnesota Cities. And I know Heather because Heather is on the Green Step City Steering Committee with me. And so I know that the League hears often from cities about their interest in energy. Can you give us a sense of what your members are saying? Thanks, Lola. So I'll round out this first part of the, the webinar here by saying that the League, which is a, a statewide association of 833 of the state's 853 cities, um, are indeed, uh, we're hearing uh, an increased interest about energy, climate, and resilience planning among our member cities. And many of the cities already have um, project initiatives or goals around that. Um, areas that we've seen an increase in our renewable energy, in particular solar, as well as Climate Smart Cities program that Lola mentioned, um, partnering with cities in Germany, 
um, and provisions in the Green Step Cities uh, program and best practices related to energy efficiency. It seems like cities are really connected to the best practices specifically related to energy, um, given the option of the wide menu of uh, best practices they can engage in as a member of the Voluntary Green Step Cities program. So this year in our policy process, which is how we develop the league's uh, platform and what they will lobby on, what we'll lobby on at the state level on behalf of our cities, there was an increased interest in energy um, at the level that it, it showed up in discussions of um, city council members, city officials, both elected and appointed who serve on these policy committees. Um, and we had a new uh, policy position that was drafted and adopted by our board of directors in November. And it's something that we will take over to the Capitol at the state level when um, they convene in uh, mid-February. Um, our policies are always driven by member um, interest and goals, they're aspirational, um, and we hope to have some movement on them in the future. So just to run through, there's a lot of text on the slide and I won't go through all of it, but did wanna highlight um, some parts of this policy that are especially relevant to this project. So you'll see, and this is just the, the format of our policies, we have a background issue statement. You can read more about this in a link that I'll share at the next slide here. Um, but the, the response basically calls on the legislature and state executive agencies charged with accomplishing the state's energy policy goals to assist cities and other local governments with efforts to identify appropriate energy efficiency and renewable energy projects at the local level. And then the policy goes on to list specific things that we would uh, hope that the state would do or that would be active at the state level. And those ones in green, again, are the ones that connect probably most directly to the uh, UER. Um, specifically, the one about, we've heard from cities that they would love a um, unified electric energy building and usage structure that is easily imported into a tracking system. They also would aim for uh, increased flexibility for utilities to work with local government, um, and other interactions with state agencies around cities um, as far as technical assistance goes. So this is one of our over 150 policies that we'll take over to the Capitol, but it is one that directly connects to the, the goals of this program, and we're um, interested in seeing, seeing how it can go forward. So if you wanna read more about our policies or the process, you can check it out on our website too. Thank you, Heather. This is the first year that your members have brought forward a policy proposal related to energy, is that right? We did have one um, that wasn't as robust in the previous years and wasn't as specific. So I think as cities interact more with utilities in certain parts of the state, we heard specific examples, which are always the most helpful as we try to con uh, communicate with legislators and other stakeholders about changes to be made. It, it's a real indication, I think, of the increasing interest that utilities, or excuse me, that um, communities have in energy and energy data. We're gonna transition to New York State, and I'm gonna introduce Jim Yanger. Jim, I know that you've had a similar level of interest in energy and climate in New York State, and I'm looking forward to hearing more about what you all have done there and how it came about. Okay, thank you, Lola. Uh, my name is Jim Yanger with Climate Action Associates. Um, we are the implementation contractor for NYSERDA on the Utility Energy Registry Project. And I'm gonna to talk to you today about the history of the utility energy registry, how it came to be and where we are with it uh, today. So just like in Minnesota, there is growing need for local energy data in New York. Uh, communities across the state of New York are also engaged in developing energy plans and sustainability plans, developing greenhouse gas inventories and implementing a variety of policies to uh, control their energy use and greenhouse gas emissions. And also in New York is, is now a community choice aggregation state. So a number of communities are interested in understanding what their aggregate purchase of uh, electricity might be under community choice aggregation. And furthermore, uh, for distributed generation planning, communities are becoming more interested in a variety of metrics to help them figure out where distributed generation units should go, as well as help them understand what the progress of, of distributed generation implementation is within their community. The 
the overall policy driver in New York for these kinds of activities is something called reforming the energy vision, which is a, an initiative led by the New York State Public Service Commission. It is designed to help revision the utility business model in New York, particularly with regards to helping enable more distributed generation uh, to, to exist. Of the many activities or the many policies that it is undertaking, some of them include expanding local government energy policy making authority, which of course increases demand for local energy data. Namely, it is helping authorize community choice aggregation and PACE financing. There are a number of different policies and processes um, involved to enable microgrids, further community distributed generation through improved interconnection processes. Uh, there's an overall move to increase better access to energy data, including opening a number of data proceedings to figure out how uh, data should be disposed, one of which specifically is on the utility energy registry. And this process to, is to help figure out if there needs to be rules regarding uh, the kinds of energy that would be available and uh, rules regarding privacy and, and other considerations, which I'll talk about in a minute. Our current status on the utility energy registry in New York, it is now under consideration for rulemaking by the Public Service Commission. Um, we're not sure when and if they will issue rules on it. It is under consideration. Um, I've listed on this slide what the case number is and what the name is. So those of you who are interested can search for this matter in, the, in our Public Service Commission and find a lot of uh, collateral on it, including public comments. There is a current co public comment period open um, to consider if there should be uh, privacy rules and what those rules should be for data disclosure, should data through the UER be public or limited access and a variety of other questions um, have come up and uh, these should be, will be addressed in the next, in the coming months ahead. So let's talk technically how this uh, UER works. How do we get data from uh, or organize this data collection with utilities? First stepping back before we work with utilities or any partner to figure out what, uh, what, how to get energy data, we want to figure out what it is. Um, in New York, we refer to these as energy demographics. And beyond just being points of energy data, they really are streams of energy data designed for long range planning. Specifically, they're organized to help characterize patterns of consumption and generation across communities that were, are specifically aligned to help communities create long term plans. They have to be high quality and consistent between utilities. They have to be feasible for utilities to actually produce. And the information must be available over the long term um, because that's how planning is, is done. Uh, we think of demographics as being consistent really across in a way three dimensions. You have to, the, you can see them here. The first one is you have to know what you're asking for. Um, you know, in New York, we're asking for residential, commercial, industrial consumption metrics. We're also considering a, a number of others. Um, for example, renewables capacity. A lot of communities are setting goals for helping, uh, for installing distributed generation, and, and they want to know what, what capacity is being uh, deployed within their community. Uh, there's a whole laundry list and wish list of things. Um, the utility energy registry won't get all of it, but we hope that it will be a growing set of information that evolves as time goes on. Um, one way we know, one thing we know we want to avoid is the old way we used to collect data, which is uh, without having any sort of registry in which um, individual entities and, and consumers and towns and cities would randomly or independently go to their utility company and, um, you know, ask for information and, uh, you know, it was a very inefficient process and it, the, the kind of information that you, you get that way is not uh, something that is consistent year over year. Um, there we go. I have a little lag in my slide. I'm sitting here in, in New York. So as I'm waiting for my slide to advance here, uh, we started to think about how uh, with NYSERDA, how we could sit and try to revision this process and how could we, could we work positively with the utilities to uh, think about a, a, a data program to, uh, to capture this information. And uh, we started thinking about the utility energy registry. So we organized, we gathered all the utilities together, fortunately, and we were very happy, all of them, and this was back in 2013, I believe, volunteered to participate in a working group in which we sat down and we organized data standards 
um, through a spreadsheet model. Um, here we go, my slides, sorry, are a little bit behind. And um, <clears throat> we designed a data collection program and all the utilities participated. Uh, we worked for several years and have been collecting dat data for a number of years from most of the major utilities for almost 1,300 cities, towns, and village villages. And I'm very pleased uh, the utilities voluntarily uh, participated in this. There was strong goodwill amongst all of our utilities to help to want to provide support to communities to help them with their sustainability efforts. Um, we, we've seen a lot of different uh, goodwill approaches evolving around the country. We think this is a great time for a registry. Um, having said that, now that we're going through our public service commission process, um, we are quite aware of that utilities themselves also have um, concerns about this kind of approach. They have interests to protect. They also have a statutory requirement to protect consumer privacy. And so it's important to, to consider these very valid concerns when working with our utilities to make something like a registry. And so I will say and, and emphasize on this slide that I believe in, in, it's in my opinion that for a utility registry to work, it has to be a win-win win proposition for communities, for policymakers, and for utilities. And, uh, and I believe that it is, and, and I'm still, and I'm very hopeful that in each of the regions where this is evolving, that the, uh, the, the leading utilities will be proud to say they are founding members of this registry, and it is providing value to them as well as to the communities that they serve. So technically, how does this thing actually work? And so I'm a registry engineer. This kind of thing is second nature to me. But so a, a registry has two basic components. You have to have a, a protocol that defines the standards that you're trying to uh, capture uh, with the data you're going to be collecting. And the utility energy registry, we've conceived of a nationwide protocol that would have state chapters that would be organized and managed by state chapters in, in the case. Um, this is project in Minnesota is going to, we help develop that chapter. Um, and then attached to the protocol piece of the registry is a technology component, the heart of which we call the Utility Energy, energy Registry Data Engine. This is an API-driven online database. And it really, it's a simple concept. It's a, an online data system. It will allow utilities to publish data directly into it according to the protocol that was a, has been adopted by the state. And then it will allow through APIs, third-party application developers, consumers, or whoever, to access that data directly. So the data engine really is very transparent. The data goes in and it comes out. And for example, the, uh, I think uh, the, uh, the regional indicators website that we just saw uh, in, it for supporting the Green Step program would be a perfect consumer where the developer of that platform could call the APIs in the UER data engine and pull directly all of the energy metrics that they need you know, to, to integrate into their platform. Um, and further connected to this project, we've designed a simple website too uh, to show the public and consumers and utilities how this will operate. And I'm going to show you some of the screenshots of this so that uh, it'll be easier for everyone to understand how this works. So here's a screenshot of the utility registry web platform that we've designed so far. This screen is really because is really to show communities how many utilities they have and which utilities are participating in the registry so far. We designed this years, a couple of years ago because as a voluntary program, we have, like Minnesota, we have many utilities. We have about 65 or 70. So when we set up New York, we registered every utility, all of them. We digitized their service territories. We put them in the database. So now every community and, or zip code or, or geography will know the utilities that are providing them energy. And then this system will track which ones are participating and, and which ones are not with the goal being hopefully at the end of the day, we can set a standard using the, with the largest utilities and then the smaller ones can hop on board um, by simply logging in and, and, uh, and activating their accounts. So here's a couple of examples. Here's a screenshot of, a, of now moving to the data layering. You can view some maps of the energy data that has been submitted so far. Here's an example of and here's the, if you look at the right side, there's all the layers that are available. This one is the community uh, scale resolution. This would be incorporated city, town, and village. This one is electricity for 2010. It's aggregated across all the utilities that reported 
So this would be a roll up, but then, it, then you can go through and just continue to slice and dice. Here you can filter, this is an example of national grids, specific community energy report that they submitted for year 2014. This is electricity in the residential bin as an example. And you can see here, we've, if you look down at the screenshot on the lower left side, there's a, there's a color bar here. One of the bottom colors is data withheld. At some point we anticipate due to data privacy concerns, they will with, be, be withholding data in some of the cells for which there are very few customers. Hey, you can continue to roll over the screen and in this case, roll over a specific municipality. Here's an example. You click on city of Saratoga Springs in New York. You can then go ahead and drill down and start looking at specific information for that specific municipality. Here's an example of the actual consumption of natural gas in therms. This is total aggregated across all any and all utilities. In this particular case, they can filter in and, and continue to, to look at their data differently. Um, if a state adopts a protocol that has monthly resolution in it or daily or whatever interval, uh, someone can go ahead and look at data at that interval as well. Here's an example for City of Rochester of monthly data um, just to show you what it could look like. You can also, because the utility energy registry will accommodate any geography layer at any resolution, we have a layer in here for New York for zip code, um, which was put in here because here's an example of New York City. You know, obviously a municipal level for New York City is not that valuable. So, so zip code provides some better resolution. Um, and this is, this data was published by National Grid. It's their national natural gas uh, consumption for 2014 by zip code. So this is just some examples of uh, how it works. And then the final area is you can go ahead and get your data. Um, we envision a simple data grid where you can filter down and uh, filter what you want and download the information you're looking for. And then this slide here, if you look at column number four, I think which makes, makes the people understand the power of this, our geography is aligned to census codes. So now using, for example, the top line here, the village of Ravina, we know what the energy consumption is in commercial sector. Using this census FIPS code, we can call the APIs from the US census and align this now to thousands of other demographics for this, for this particular code, whether it's population, housing, income level, et cetera. So you can begin to think of the vast amount of analysis that you can begin by aligning your data. This is also why we start, we start to think of this as an energy census. Um, and finally, we have a dashboard. This is a beta version of it where we imagine utilities will be able to log in and manage their data. This is a distributed responsibility model. So if the utilities will be responsible for aligning themselves to this protocol and, uh, and publishing their own data. So here they would log in, view a status of their community energy reports, determine if they've published them or not. They can pull the data out of it if they won't, don't like it or if they have mistakes in it. Um, they could go over to the left side, or sorry, to the right side and uh, select a period for their community energy report and download a template in an Excel format. Uh, put their data into it on their end and then re-upload it back into the system. They could also use the APIs here and, and do it in direct dump into the system. Um, so finally, I'm gonna conclude in a couple slides. Once we started doing this in New York, we were thinking, is there a national model here? We think that there is because the data problem for you know, utilities and communities and is, is similar uh, nationwide. And plus a number of large utilities work in, in many different states. So it might be easier for them to participate in something larger. So here, uh, we've already designed the platform to accommodate all, all 50 states. It's really an empty container. So we're hoping the, the working group in Minnesota will figure out what the geographies need to be and all the data points so we can configure it for it to start collecting data. Um, and as Lola already mentioned, this is part of a state energy program uh, uh, funded project from the Department of Energy to help see if this works. And, uh, and, and we're excited to be working with Minnesota on this. So uh, finally, how do states participate? This is modular. We're hoping to engage other states as we go along. It really is pretty basic. You organize a working group, you figure out your protocol, you work with your utilities, you figure out your rules, you adopt them, then we configure the UER to start working, and then we turn it on and, and, and hopefully start collecting and, and uh, managing information at that point. So with that, I'm going to uh, leave it and pass it back and uh, I'll wait to the end for some questions. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jim. That is a lot of information. And 
it, it's a good time to mention that we will we are recording the webinar and we will be posting the recording and the slide deck on our web page. We will send the link to that out to everyone who registered for the webinar so that you can find it in case you want to look at these slides again. Um, the other thing I'll mention is I, I want to remind you to enter your questions in the Q&A box at the top left of your screen. We're starting to get some questions, which is great. What I'm going to do now is take us back to Mauricio Leon and let him talk, invite him to talk about the utility energy registry pre-development work that has already been done with, in partnership with the University of Minnesota and a number of other stakeholders. Thanks again, Lola. Um, programs like the Regional Indicators Initiative here in Minnesota help to identify the need for simplifying data collection. The Excel Community Energy Reports show the interest of energy utilities to help local governments to get this data. But this is all part of a bigger trend. Over the past 10 years, Minnesota utilities have seen an increased demand for community-scale data as communities engage in climate action planning. As you heard from Jim, the state of New York, but also the county of Los Angeles in California, are examples of places that already have something like an utility energy registry. But what would an utility energy registry look like in Minnesota? In 2015, a small grant from the University of Minnesota was given to a group of stakeholders representing multiple sectors to study the potential of the utility energy repository in Minnesota. For this project, which is called toward a statewide energy data repository, they were able to bring stakeholders from the public and private sectors, as well as nonprofit partners and the staff of utility companies. The grant consisted of pre preliminary research and receiving a stakeholder input on how an utility energy registry could be useful to multiple groups in the state, primarily to local governments. This was only to analyze how could something like the utility energy registry be useful. In other words, what kind of data could be collected? What will this data be used for? And what would it take from the utility side to make this happen? So, some of the findings of the study were that community scale energy data is in demand in the state. And also that community energy scale data could be useful for a variety of purposes. Some of the purposes that could benefit are, for example, number one, community planning and action. Programs like local PEP could be made easier and thus expanded to more communities. In general, standard data protocols and improved accessibility will enable a greater number of cities to participate in energy planning, reduce the staff burden, and ensure the consistency needed to track progress over time and make comparisons with peer communities. Number two, policy development. State, county, city staff, and decision makers rely on data to develop impactful policies and track their effectiveness. So an example is that cities are exploring benchmarking ordinances and green building policies to meet their energy goals. Having citywide energy data can help cities evaluate the potential impact of these types of programs and assist in their development. Number three, program and product development. Utilities that offer programs like Excel Energy does could provide a way to track the success of this over time. Number four, community engagement and outreach. An example of this are energy competitions, like the city of Duluth was recently selected as one of 50 communities to compete nationally for the Georgetown Energy Prize, which tracks monthly data for each community through an online dashboard. And then number five, research. Research efforts provide the foundation for the ongoing evolution of policies, programs, products, and processes aimed at advancing clean energy goals. 
the group identified four sections with the components that will best support end users of an utility energy registry. However, this is only the starting point for a more refined conversation that we will have with the state working group. These sections were, for example, metrics. What metrics would we like to include? Things like energy consumption, expenditures, and utility-specific emission factors. Which sectors we would like to include? This refers to the segmentation of energy users into groups with similar characteristics. So an example, residential versus commercial versus industrial. What geospatial resolution? This refers to which geographic regions in which the data of individual energy users should be aggregated to form community scale data. So is it by the county or is it by the city? Is it by the uh, tribal nation? Time interval, which is uh, what time interval we want to use, whether it is annual data or money data, those kind of decisions. So I am personally very excited about the outcome from the state and technical working group meetings because together we will determine what is the best way to leverage the utility energy registry framework to Minnesota. Thank you. Now I'm going to hand it back to Lola. Thank you, Mauricio. Clearly there's been a lot done already here in Minnesota. Finally, I want to introduce Jessica Burdett. Jessica, you have a long title. You're the <laughs> State Energy Office Manager for Efficiency, Assurance, and Operations at the Minnesota Department of Commerce, Energy Resources. The short version of that, I think, is that you help to run our Ener State Energy Office. That's correct. And, <laughs> uh, uh, Jessica is going to share with us some of the context of other work going on in Minnesota and how the Minnesota Utility Energy Registry would fit within other state goals. Thank you. I appreciate the introduction and uh, both the long form and abbreviated form. Uh, um, I just wanted to provide a little bit of uh, statewide uh, context for the, the utility energy registry. Um, many of you know that Minnesota has long-standing clean energy and greenhouse gas emission goals um, that have been uh, established through um, uh, a greenhouse gas emission reduction goal um, that is progressively uh, increases reductions over time, as well as renewable energy generation requirements and energy efficiency resource standards. Uh, um, much of what we have talked about so far today um, helps uh, provide um, support for achieving those those high level state goals uh, and and as we look toward how we are going to continue to meet um, additional goals that have been um, established around solar energy or the introduction of community solar gardens um, we find that uh, communities are playing a more critical role in being able to help us meet those those state energy goals um, could you go back to the slide with the content please so yeah sorry we're well, having a bit of a technical flaw that's okay I'll keep going um, so as we see communities playing a, a larger role in being able to help us meet our statewide energy and environment goals, we also see that that with that ne necessity that communities are becoming more engaged and and setting their own goals uh, to that that match in some form, um, but at a more granular level, uh, uh, our state goals. But what we find is that you know you communities need tools to be able to do that uh, and uh, as we've talked about regional indicators green step cities uh, uh, and other efforts uh, we also have efforts that occur at the state like our performance contracting guaranteed energy savings program local units of government for efficiency the statewide conservation improvement program um, that that 
as we have these programs, uh, there are still tools that are needed to help um, communities be able to visualize and track and establish uh, these goals and manage and measure how they are able to achieve these goals. Uh, so, so we see um, this utility energy registry is playing a, a critical role among other programs and tools uh, in being able to help communities engage uh, at this level. We also know that there is a lot of demand on uh, utility companies for uh, data requests uh, and they come in many different forms asking for many different types of metrics, some of which utilities have, some they don't. And um, we have over 180 utilities in the state, most of which have different ways of billing and tracking uh, energy usage uh, while there's always meters, um, different in internal uh, platforms for customer billing and customer uh, energy use tracking can vary quite widely across the different types of utilities that, that are out there. So um, one of the, the possibilities that this or solutions that the utility energy registry tool could provide is in helping to um, create uh, standards uh, and, and common metric requests uh, uh, for utility companies that that um, are, are that that allow a utility to say, okay, while we don't have necessarily something broken down by zip code or um, by this certain metric, having a certain level of data available at a community level can direct those inquiries to a platform and say, hey, you know, this is what we do have that is available, that is a standard that has been vetted, uh, and, and maybe take some of the, the inconsistency out of uh, the current practice that, that we see today. Um, while we do have, uh, you know, these considerations, there are many other policy considerations to, to balance, uh, in particular around um, consumer energy use data and privacy. Um, in 2012, the Public Utilities Commission in Minnesota initiated a proceeding. If you're interested, the docket number is 12-1344. Um, to look at the data privacy um, policies and practices of rate regulated utilities. Uh, and there was a, a working group uh, that was tasked with uh, addressing a number of questions around um, dissemination of individual consumer data versus aggregated data, what the value um, uh, was associated with third party access to this data, uh, cost recovery associated uh, with the costs of disseminating data or updating and tracking uh, reporting uh, uh, these requests or updating um, software tools necessary to accommodate any requests. Um, it was about a three year long process uh, and, and, and continues in some form today. Um, there was a, a milestone order issued in January of 2017 by the, by the Public Utilities Commission um, that uh, allowed for that basically indicated that individual um, customer energy use is indeed uh, private and should not be disclosed without authorization from the customer, but that some aggregation uh, was allowed. The PUC did not actually set an aggregation threshold, but did establish a process for utilities to um, file uh, for PUC review uh, what their aggregation um, uh, methodologies and practices uh, and thresholds were going to be. Um, so there was also some, uh, there were some other considerations made in that order, but um, as, we, as we move through this process and entertaining the idea of a statewide uh, um, or a, a utility energy registry, um, we always have to consider, uh, you know, at, at what cost do we, do we uh, work to achieve our, our energy and environment goals? Goals and how do we balance those with other policy considerations such as consumer privacy. Um, I would recommend uh, for those who are interested in, in some of the gory details of that proceeding uh, um, to, to review that docket. And again, the docket number is 12-1344. 
But as we move forward, um, given that there are these considerations to be made uh, in balancing different public policy interests, uh, um, this effort uh, that is being funded by the DOE um, is going to have a, a robust stakeholder process. And I think that it's important for those of you who are uh, attending the webinar today and are interested in uh, um, guiding the direction of this and helping to find that balance of consideration um, to participate in the stakeholder process. I know that while communities are, are interested and, and this is a potentially really good tool for them, there's a lot to be considered um, in terms of utility function as well as the consumer interest, uh, um, whether they're homeowners or businesses. And so I would encourage folks to, to engage in the stakeholder process um, to help determine a potential path forward for a tool like this in Minnesota. Uh, that's all I have to share today. Um, my contact information is on the next slide. If anybody has any questions uh, about um, some of the work uh, and the policy uh, considerations that we're considering at the state level, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jessica, and I apologize for the technical difficulties that we had for a minute there. That brings us to the question of what are the next steps and the timeline for this project, and then we will get to a couple of your uh, questions and answers. It's a year-long project, as I mentioned. We'll have a state working group that we anticipate will meet three times over the course of the year, a technical working group that will meet between now or Feb between February and, and May or June, programming over the summer and early fall, and we are hoping that we'll find one or two utilities at least to try it and try the data entry and see how it works, test the beta version. So let's move into question and answers. There, there are a number of there questions related to the kind of technical questions related to what type of data might be included. And Jim, you might be able to answer some of these with respect to what you all do in the state of New York. There's a question about whether the data just includes traditional power plants or whether there's a way to include generation from industrial commercial sources that might be on site and feeding electricity into the grid. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, it's not something that is, I'm just thinking out loud, it's not something that's considered Currently, the registry is designed for utility companies. Um, so if there was a, a third party generator, um, they would probably have to register themselves to submit data. Um, we're trying to figure out how to track distributed generation um, in some way. But again, this is an ongoing process. And if state working groups want to think about these issues and come up with solutions, they can be in incorporated into the protocol. Here's another question, Jim, for you. Um, what degree of involvement have local governments had in establishing the metrics and geospatial parameters in New York? Well, um, well in New York, they were very actively involved. The, the program, the original uh, design of the UER was supported by a NYSERDIS communities program, which really works directly with local governments. So there was a lot of different processes to bring them together to think about what they wanted. Um, which created the data ask, which ultimately then we brought to utilities. So um, we're hopeful in Minnesota that your stakeholder process includes a, a lot of different communities. And that's uh, obviously they're part of the demand. That's great, thank you. There's a good question here about what the vision is for the ongoing management of this tool in Minnesota once it's developed, which is 
sort of obviously an excellent question and is one of the questions that the state working group will take up and that that is part of the scope of the project to figure that out. So we don't have an answer to that now, but hope to have uh, some answers at the end of the project. And then Jessica, there are questions here related to data privacy. You talked about the commission's work to date. Um, one of the folks on the phone here is wondering if we anticipate whether or not the commission in Minnesota will have an interest in engaging on uh, the utility energy registry and setting some standards with respect to it. I, I know you can't speak for them. Yeah, I can't really speak on behalf of the commission and, and what their interest is going to be. Um, but uh, in a recent presentation that I, I did give to the the commission, I, I did uh, raise uh, this topic uh, um, and and let them know that this project was occurring and, and we can um, actively engage staff uh, um, to make sure they're aware uh, of this work and how it interfaces with with their work uh, and it's it's up to them in determining how um, they want to continue to proceed on the existing uh, um, uh, proceedings that that uh, overlap with uh, this topic thanks so much we're gonna wrap up now we've got our contact information up on the screen and I'm, I apologize we weren't able to get to everyone's questions, but we do invite you to reach out to us. The, as I said, the recording and the slide deck will be posted probably next week and we'll be sure to let you all know about the link. So thank you so much for joining.